Right. What, what do you think is the future at the moment for comics in the UK? And how do you see the rest of the indie market in Europe and, and, and out into America is, is going? Where's the direction? Um, well, I, I, think, I think the publishing market that we're operating in right now is, is a bit like the music uh, market was 10, 15 years ago in that it's, it's a broken model and the old publishers don't know what to do so they're just driving straight ahead towards this giant iceberg of, of, of nothing and um, really they don't have a lot to offer us. I mean, basically, big publishers give you a, a small amount of money to steal your ideas because they don't have any ideas, they just have old dead characters and so they hire creators basically to take their ideas and it's a bit like you know, music com you know, companies used to give a, a band a, uh, an advance so that they could um, grab the band and that band then couldn't go anywhere else for five or ten years because they had to pay back the money and it works the same way in publishing and um, the great thing now with technology is the fact that you don't need to take the money um, all they have to offer you is money and if you've got ideas you can take that idea anywhere and, and put it on the internet so instead of publishing a book which isn't going to sell very well because the publisher doesn't promote it properly you can put it up on the internet and give it away um, so that people read it and then collect it as, as a collection um, produce your own cool merchandising and, and do it all yourself as a business. I mean, it requires you being a little bit more organized and a little bit more driven because someone isn't drip feeding you money. Yeah. But um, it means that the future is in your hands and, and it's up to you what you want to do with your life. And to me, that's, that's what being an artist is about. It's about having control and about not making excuses. And it, it, I, I think it's sad in, in that for probably the last 20, 30 years, a lot, of, a lot of creators have used it as an excuse. Oh no, you know, I can't do this, I can't do that. And we don't have that excuse anymore. You know, we have we have the internet and um, and it's this great liberating thing you know it's it's not it's not destroying comics um, I don't think illegal downloading is destroying comics I, I think it's a bit like sort of when people used to make mixtapes you know people used to send me like a tape and go listen to this band it's amazing and then I'd go and see them live and um, it's the same thing I get lots of kids coming to me and they go oh I love Tanker and I go oh which issue did you buy and they go I read it all online and I'm like great I didn't get paid for that but they read it and um, if I had t-shirts and stuff there to sell for them I know they'd buy them yeah. and um, yeah. It's the same thing like with my new series, I can do that and, and I, I want to be able to interact with, with the fan base and, and the readers and I, I want it to be uh, a situation where it's a lot more interactive, you know, it, it's about, it, it's not us and them, it's about people who um, have a common love of, of reading and, and storytelling and, and, and that's the great thing now is the fact that um, unlike where you, sh you used to just have a letters page and people would write you a letter and, 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 the, and it was very dysfunctional the way you communicated with people, now I can put a piece of artwork up online and on Tumblr or Twitter or Facebook and instantly get feedback from people right. and they can personally get in touch with you and, yeah. and, and I think that's the future is that we have, we have to take responsibility for publishing stuff but that's actually going to make things better because instead of using a monthly or weekly model which is what you know DC, Marvel, um, you know, 2080, all of the old books they're dinosaurs, those things don't work anymore, their sales are absolutely down, I mean e even Marvel, I think they, you know, when they were distributing stuff through Diamond into Europe, there's something from like 8,000 copies, I and mean, it's, it's nothing, right. I mean, it's practically a fanzine, um, and, and, and they're still stepping on things, like, you know, Marvel stepped on Panini, and they've killed off Marvel UK, and all they're doing is stepping on ideas and dreams and, and people's lives, you know, I mean, there's creators there who've lost their jobs, because yeah. a bunch of greedy people in, in, in LA decided to, you know, stop it, and, um, Whereas now we can take our ideas and we can say fuck you to the, these these big old dinosaur companies and, and do it ourselves. I, mean, I feel like I need to give you a revolutionary yeah, flag. Yeah, I do. Know? Like I said, this is why I need an army of yeah. skinhead women behind me. You know? <laughs> I need some backup here because otherwise Warner Brothers is going to come and slap me down with a lawsuit. So. <laughs> Listen, I got to see you at MCM and I noticed some of the most amazing um, comic tattoos that you've got. I, I, yeah, I got slightly carried away. So yeah, I would make a great lampshade. For I, I would really like to show some of the fans, if it's okay with you, some of the uh, comic tattoos you've got. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, I'll, t I'll try not to get too undressed. But um, yeah, I, I, as as a kid, I was a I was a huge fan of um, Mick McMahon, who drew Judge Dredd, and uh, and Jack Kirby, who um, did Silver Surfer. So um, yeah, I, I got uh, sort of uh, Kirby and McMahon tattooed all over me, which was. Uh, it, it was fun, but I ran out of room rather quickly. So too soon. Uh, and uh, it's a it's a funny thing. You needed a mannequin, really. I did. I should have just I, you know a spare set of skin, yeah, yeah, so that you yeah. could just switch in and out, or or skin graft. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on that. But uh, <laughs> it, the funny thing now is, like I said, it, is I'm actually working with Mick. Like Mick's been doing Tank Girl, and we were just over um, in Derry, Northern Ireland, at the uh, 2D Comic uh, Festival, and uh, he was the special guest. Wow. And I was interviewing him and Glenn Fabry up on stage, and I was kind of sitting there. Um, discussing his work and, uh, and, and Glenn's work as well 
and uh, and I was just thinking, you know, if I could go back and tell my ten-year-old self that I would be, you know, lucky enough to draw comics for a living, I'd be sitting there in a, in a bar on stage drinking a pint of Guinness with Mick McMahon and Glenn Fabry discussing the work, and Mick and I would be exchanging pictures every day by email um, over the projects that we're doing. I, I really wouldn't have believed it, you know. I mean, it it, it really is a dream come true. So I mean, it like I said, we're in a lucky position now where we as as artists and and writers I, I think there's no such there's no division between small press and published work anymore because many of the small press books sell as many as the published books you know and the only difference is snobbery in, right. in, in that people are like oh he doesn't work for image oh he doesn't work for dc and i think that's going because people don't care about that anymore people don't go to comic shops normal people don't go to comic shops only comic readers go to comic shops yeah. and those people are a very finite market and we need to reach out to other people who just use the internet who use YouTube what do you, what, what do you think would be a really good way to just getting through to the, the average layman you know in the UK I, I, on, on, and trying to convince them to experience I would say because I'm using the word experience yeah. here because really something like Tank Girl produces an experience right uh, you know how would you say would be a good way to get people involved in that experience um, uh, it's tough. I mean, if I if I completely worked out the strategy, uh, uh, strategy, I'd be I'd be um, I'd be sort of advising large companies. But I, I think it is things like using stuff like YouTube, you know, directly interfacing with fans. Uh, I mean, that's why I've spent a lot of time over the last few years online answering far too many emails. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I get I get people emailing me every day going, "Where can I buy your books?" And it's like they can find me on Facebook, but they they can't seem to find find Tenko books on Amazon. And that's the problem is that people can't find the material and even they go into the comic shops and they go, I looked for your book but it wasn't there. And that's because retailers, be, because of the way that they have to order stuff, you know, it used to be that you, know, you uh, as a retailer could order 10, 10 Spider-Mans and if you only sold five of them you sent the rest back. But now retailers have to pay for everything up front. And because of the way that the marketplace is and Diamond have a stranglehold on, on, on distribution, um, it's a big risk for retailers to, to order smaller books like Tank Girl because if they order 10 of them and they only sell five, they're stuck with dead stock. And that means their money's tied up, and they go to business. Yeah. And I can understand them not doing that. And but it's never. It, it just means that it's like a puddle. It's an ever decreasing circle. And um, we need to break out of that. And I think the way that we do that is is by making things available online, interacting more directly. And, and that's the great thing is that there's so many more festivals now. I mean, um, ten years ago, I was um, I was quite depressed about the state of comics. You know, like comics festivals had dwindled. Um, in the UK, there was only the Bristol show, which was a great show. UCAC disappeared. And well. UCAC just had just fallen over and died. And it was like, Christ, it, it felt like comics was getting old, where suddenly it feels like comics is getting young again. And the kids who are coming into it, they don't give a shit about the old stuff. They don't care about a, a monthly comic. They don't care about having a standing order in a comic shop. Yeah. They want to pick up their iPhone and download something and flick through it frame by frame. They don't care about page layout. They, th those things are redundant because they, they live in an age of, of, of Google search and YouTube where things, are, things come in squares. They don't come in rectangular pages. And... It's us old fuddy duddies who've got to catch up with them. It's it, we we are we're the problem, not them. Right. And as usual, it's like it's the old people turning around and tutting their fingers at the young people. You know, it looks at the music industry like, oh, you've destroyed music. No, they haven't. They've just taped it because you were stupid enough to give them tape recorders. Right. Um, and now we, we've given kids the internet and we've unlocked that door and we can't relock it. And um, so we've got to change our working method. You know, you, you, you can't force people to stop downloading stuff off the internet. Sure. And I think criminalizing people for wanting to read a book is just, that's vile. Mm. Um, admittedly, yeah, they haven't paid for your work, but that's because you have to figure out a way of making them pay for it and, and wanting to pay for it because, you know, to be honest, if, if they don't pay for the work that you do, I, you know, I've got to pay my rent somehow and so, so my friends who create books and um, we'll, we'll starve to death. Yeah. And there's not much on me. Yeah. <laughs> I need feeding. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, I appreciate, again, you having a chance to, to talk to us about this.